Okay, so we're going to look at a titration. Today we're looking at, a titration is a way of measuring the concentration of an unknown acid or base. Okay, today we're going to be looking at finding the concentration of an unknown base. We're looking at sodium hydroxide. Okay, and we're going to react that with 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Now we know from our work in chemistry that... An acid plus a base gives us salt plus water. So we're going to have hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide, and it's going to give me sodium chloride, aka table salt, and water. Okay. Now, we're using a titration for this because I want to know the exact volume of acid required to neutralise my alkali, okay, or my base. So I want to know the exact end point of my reaction and we're going to do that using an indicator called phenylphthalene okay now phenylphthalene is much like universal indicator it will change color based on what it is reacting with when it reacts with our base which is what we're going to be putting in our conical flask it's going to go a lovely bright purple with the acid is colorless so the color we are looking for right at the middle point here because we know neutral is in the middle of acid and base, we're looking for pink. Because pink's in the middle of purple and clear. So the first thing I've done, so we just quickly run through the equipment. I've got a burette here, okay? Now this burette runs from 0 to 50, okay? And I filled that with my hydrochloric acid, okay? And I put that at the 0 mark. I could start elsewhere, but just to save my maths, I'm always going to make sure that I start at 0. Now, what I have done is in my table of results then, for my initial volume of acid, I have put zero, okay? And what we're going to look for is the final volume of acid and the volume needed. I've then got a glass pipette. This pipette is for 25 millilitres, okay? So I know that 25 millilitres of my base is going to go in my conical flask. And I've got what we call a pipette filler. This is a more accurate way of measuring out volume than using a measuring cylinder or maybe using a beaker or even adding it drop by drop with a pipette. Okay, so I'm carefully going to hold the stem of the glass and carefully going to put it on. And then I've got my beaker of acid and I'm then going to slightly, I'm just going to turn the wheel to begin to fill my glass pipette with base. So it's going to suddenly go very, very quickly. I'm going to slowly hold on to it. I'm going to move it tighter. And it's on my glass line there. Can you see that, sir? Yep. Right. So these pipettes, they will only do 25 milliliters. They are. So you can get other mm -hmm. larger ones, okay? But the ones which we need to know about, I'm going to use 25 centimetres cubed. So that's minimising the error. Minimising the error, they say. So if we weren't that worried about being accurate, perhaps we would use a measuring cylinder. But we're looking for real exact values here because we're going to perform some calculations. Now I'm going to place my conical flask. And we know a conical flask, kind of it looks like an upside down V. I'm going to place it on my white paper. We could use a white towel here. The reason I'm using a white piece of paper is for colour change. Okay, I really want to be able to see that colour change. I'm then going to add a couple of drops of my phenyl filing. Okay, and straight away you can see that pink colour. Okay, I'm going to give it a swirl. So that's turned pink because that's the base it's now in the there, base, right? yes, sir. So at the moment, my indicator's showing me everything in there is a base. And in an exam, if you couldn't remember the name of the indicator, could they just say universal indicator or well, is this universal important? universal indicator, the problem is, is that it would be purple with a base, but we would go through blue, green, yellow and red through this change. Code. The good thing about using an indicator like phenylphthalein is that I've got two possible colours. I've either got pink, which is the colour I'm looking for, or I've got clear from my purple starting point. If okay. I've gone clear, I've gone too far. I just want pink. Okay. 
So, quick recap what I've done. I've filled my burette with sodium hydroxide. Remember, I don't know the concentration of that. I then recorded my initial volume of base. I've used a glass pipette and a pipette filler to place 25 centimetres cube of acid in my conical flask. Oh, sorry, of base. I made a mistake there, sir. And then finally, I've added some phenolphthalein. Now, this is the time where we need to do our titration. So, I start my titration by simply opening the valve at the bottom. And I technique we want really is one hand just sort of swirling nice and slowly. There's no rush with this, okay? You even see sometimes doing a trial run, don't you, sir? Yeah. To kind of gauge at what point. Obviously, when Sir, I don't know if you can see this, but when Sir opens the valve, this comes down pretty, pretty quickly. And if you do a trial run, you can kind of gauge at which point that neutralisation is going to happen. So at the moment, we've still got because it's purple, we've still got a majority of base in there. Okay. okay? We have got a reaction happening. There's a very slight tinge of pink, okay? Perhaps I've actually gone a little bit too far there, okay? So that's an inaccuracy kind of modelled there by me. I've gone a little bit too far. If I kept running that, you will notice all of the pinkness has now gone, okay? So the last thing which I want to do is obviously I've just shown you a demonstration. It went in about 26, so into my table. My final volume of acid was 26, which then means my volume of acid used was 26, because I'm just going to take my final takeaway, my initial. So if you started the next one at 26, your initial volume here yes. would be 26. Your final volume, let's just say that is 40 then, would be 40 minus 26, and that would be your difference yeah. then, yeah? Yeah, and we just... We saw then just how close the margins of error are, okay? So I probably added just one drop too much and nearly all of my pink tinge went. There's probably a tiny bit left, wasn't there, sir, at the end, for you to see. Now, just to, so quickly over the inaccuracies then, we've got human error, okay? Very tough thing to do. We've also got simply reading the burette, okay? We could get air bubbles in the burette, which could mess up how much acid we're using. Also, and again, it's a tough skill using this glass pipette because it's very hard to keep it on that black line. I think now, the, the biggest way that we could improve this experiment, though, sir, is the, is the colour change, knowing exactly when it happens. Yeah. So maybe we would use, well, a colorimeter. I think we've used them before in rates practicals. So that's a way of improving on that human error once more. Now, finally... We have also, under acids and bases, we know they make an acid plus a base gives a salt plus water. We can use titration to make a salt. Okay, what we would do though is that I would run this experiment two, three, four times. I get a lovely mean of how much acid and base is there needed to have that one to one, that neutralization reaction. I'm then going to run the same experiment, so say it took me 26 centimetres cubed, without my indicator. Okay. So to do a titration, we've got the indicator. To make the salt, we're not going to use the indicator. 
And that would give you crystals. And that would give us crystals after allowing it to dry out, yeah. Or to evaporate. Yes. And then you could just use evaporation technique, is it? Yeah, evaporation technique, much like when we've made a copper sulfate crystal. Lovely. Cracking. Yourself.